where are we in the United States of America in race relations and what, what you see from day to day in your life? Skip, they wouldn't want to ask me that. They wouldn't want my answer to represent it because God knows I have been nothing but blessed. My whole path, my whole, these 33 years have been nothing but a yeah. blessing. I have, I have never, and I'm, never is a strong word, I've never dealt with racism, and I'm glad I didn't have to. And I don't know if it's because of my blessings, I don't know if it's, but it's, it, it is my reality. So I have a, I would have to say, I, not only did I thought it was over, I still believe it's over, but obviously it is. So you've never experienced any offensive behavior from any other color or? No, sir. Wow. But you are blessed. But, but you see what's going on, even in your city, New Orleans, with yeah. Alton Sterling, yeah. uh, the, the, uh, during Katrina, the yeah. officers that killed those and ended mm -hmm. up in jail. So yeah. we... I, I know you say you're not paying attention to it, yeah. but you see some well, of the I see, things that I see what's what he, going on. Right. Yeah. As far as an opinion on what's going on, I mean, of course, we all wanted to, we all want somebody to figure out what's going on first and then put a stop to it or right. try to put a stop to it or everybody come together and figure something out and maybe just coming together is the is the solution. solution. But uh, we'd have to do that first. And um, I, Obviously, we have a bunch of differences. People feeling this way, people feeling that way. When you come to a person like me, I, my, my answer is always the same, man. My politics, my flag, my country, my nation, my world, all that is Regine, Cameron, Neil, and his brother, right. Tony. That's it. That's my, that's my nation. That's my flag. Mm -hmm. That's my world. That's my... That's my protest, that's my don't protest, that's my everything, that's all that matters, those four kids to me. I remember one time I saw you after you had done a concert, I think it was in Westchester, different kind of neighborhood, but, but I asked you what the racial breakdown was of your audience, do you remember this? And you told me the only black face you could see in the whole audience was your makeup artist. I believe that's what you said, and she was in the front row, right? <laughs> a lot of white kids love rap. Yes. Explain that. What, what, what does that say to you? What's the message of it? What's the bigger picture of it? I don't want to be bashed because I don't want to sound like I'm on the wrong if there is a side, but I thought that was clearly a message that there was no such thing as racism. That's what I thought that was. Okay. I I got that it. was a perfect example. Um, when I look out and I come up off the stage, when I'm coming out the bottom of the stage of my show, when I'm on tour, and I'm in my stance or whatever, and I open my eyes and I see everybody. I don't see a, I don't have a, this type of crowd or that type of crowd. My crowd has always been everybody, thank God. And that's all I can answer for, so. Do you think the younger generation, the millennials, do you think they're moving a little further away from the racism as opposed oh, yes. to oh, yeah. where it's it used cool to be? To them. It's not cool to them. Right. It's not cool to them, it don't matter to them. And when some it's not it's so not cool that it doesn't even matter to them. You know, they like what? What he's what? You know, they like what what happened? And that's their that's their response. That's the millennials' response. But it could it be that you're a musician a, a musician and obviously as an ex professional athlete or as, as an entertainer, mm -hmm. do you think they treat you differently? Although you are black, you are a prominent figure in the black community. Could that be? I, that's why I said I said I said, I'm sure it may be because of my blessing. Right. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure that's why my path has been different. Right. But um, I'm, I'm be first to want to say I'm sure that it has a lot to do with it, right. but it also is the person that I am. I believe strongly that it's the person that I am. You treat people a certain Exactly. Way. Shannon, how do you feel about what Wayne is saying? Well, a man can really only speak to his experience. Mm -hmm. And as I've alluded to, I come from rural South Georgia. I've experienced things. I've yeah. been called things. And sometimes you can only see things through the eyes of the man that have cried. So if this man hasn't, hasn't experienced racism, haven't been called out of his name, he, he's doing right by not saying and trying to make up a story. Mm -hmm. So it, did you hear what Lil Wayne said? He experienced the same thing. I commend him. Although he's from New Orleans, uh, the ward, what, what ward are you from? 17th. 17th ward. We know what it's like in New Orleans. 
although he has never experienced that, he's not going to sit up here on national television and try to embellish in order to further advance the conversation because then people are going to say, see, there is little Wayne. Not only is an athlete, we have an entertainer, a musician, a very prominent figure who's also experienced. So I commend him. If he's never, kudos to you, bro, in 33 years. I'm 48 years old from rural South Georgia, and if you don't think it's alive and well, Wayne, check my timeline. <laughs> check my timeline when Skip and I had a discussion last year. Uh, they still would use the N-word. They would still call you the animal with the ring around his tail. Hey, do you. That makes you feel better. I think it says a lot more about you than me, but I'm cool with it. It's not going to stop me from doing what I do. Shannon, does it give you any even a glimmer of hope what he's saying about his more generation, the millennial generation. Yeah, I, 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 I'm a firm believer that racism, bigotry, is a learned, taught emotion. So if you do not teach someone to do that, mm -hmm. they won't extend that. Mm -hmm. So it's got to stop somewhere. But you have to understand it's been going on for such a long, long period of time. You have 400 plus years of this in the U.S., Mm -hmm. People have been fighting back in biblical times. Yes. It was divided up. And so, like I said, Wayne, I commend you. I'm, I'm glad you're, you're speaking. You're not embellishing a story. Um, being from New Orleans, experiencing what you've been able to experience. Uh, I, I remember reading where you say you, you, you accidentally shot mm -hmm. yourself. But uh, racism, racism is real. He knows it's real, although he hasn't experienced it. With that said, that... What that said that he, that that night that day, yeah, that I shot myself. The police, I was the only person in the house. Right. The police came through there. They knocked the doors down. I was on the floor. Right. They jumped over. They all hopped over me, looking for the drugs and looking for this mm -hmm. and that. It was a white police that came, ran up there and stopped and said, "What the, are y'all doing? Do y'all not see this baby on the floor?" <laughs> and they said, "We called the ambulance. The ambulance they say ambulance. He has a hole in his chest." He picked me up. He brought me to the hospital himself. He was white. 